Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on BC one zero one one zero identity. And last class we studied on the spirit of life in Christ. Last class we studied on spirit of life in Christ, and we covered on various aspects. So in today, in this class, in today's class, we're going to discuss on the redemption. We're going to study more on the redemption. So redemption and being redeemed in Christ. So even before we could begin with our session, request one of us to begin the class with a word of prayer. Anyone would like to begin a class with a word of prayer? Anyone from the on-campus? Sean, would you like to pray? You can take the mic there. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you very much for guiding us all here to this class, Heavenly Father. Please bless Dana, Heavenly Father. You are mighty, Heavenly Father, to help get your word across, Heavenly Father, and to help all of our students to understand, to understand your word, Heavenly Father. Please guide us, lead mind to this class, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> okay thank you sean today we're going to study on the redeemed in christ we are on page 69 on our notes request you all to please turn to your notes on page 69 so what means to be redeemed in christ what do you mean by redeemed in christ Been saved? Anyone? What do you mean redeemed in Christ? Yeah, the online session, you all can post your comments on the chat. <clears throat> yes. Been drawn back. Oh, bought back. Been bought back. Yes, sure. Okay, you, you have been renewed back from your past life to a new self. Anyone else from the class? Anyone from the online? Nina, Arila, Karen? Boys, the side seem to be very quiet. What is redeemed? What does the dictionary define redemption as? <clears throat> Something that was lost has been found now. Okay. So the dictionary defines redemption as the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. It also says the action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment or clearing a debt. But the word redemption, <clears throat> the word redeem, when you see the scholars describe the word redeemed means to buy out. To buy out where the complete status or the complete state of that person changes after that. So the term used specifically is in, uh, in reference to the purchase of a slave's freedom or a slavery market. You know, those days. Those days, you know how we go to the market, we see uh, many items being sold, right? Many items being sold. So in those days, they used to sell the slavery. The slaves, they used to have a slavery market in the marketplace, and they used to sell slaves. Now, how do you think, or you can imagine, they used to sell a slave? The slaves used to be naked. 
when they are put in the market for sale, they used to keep them naked and bound their hand at the back. And they will make them stand. So people who are coming to purchase them will check their body. Is it fine? Are they healthy? Do they have any scarves or marks? You know, so the owners used to come, pay a price and redeem that slave person from that market and take him back home. Or they used to purchase a slave for that purpose at home. So this is how a slavery market was in those days. He's very helpless. A slave in that status was very helpless. And if he's a slave, he's a slave for his whole lifetime. There's no freedom. Now, why will somebody buy paying a price to give you the freedom? You, will, you have been bought for the purpose of a slave. So you have been always been bounded in that slavery. You are into a bondage of slavery. Your hands are tied. You need to listen to what the master says. Sometimes they may give a food, sometimes they may not give a food to the slave. Or sometimes they may provide just one meal, poor clothing. Sometimes the slave has been harassed. So this was the status of a slave in those days. So the application of this term to Christ's death on the cross is quite clear. Why? Because Jesus paid the price on the cross once and for all, and he gave us the freedom. He gave us the freedom. And we inherit the freedom that we have in Christ. So this can we all turn to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. So it says, I'll read it for all. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So what does it say? It says, in him we have redemption. We have been redeemed. A price has been paid. How? By his own blood, through his blood. For forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his glory. So what happened? So Christ redeemed us from a previous state from the state of slavery to a state of freedom. So God has purchased us by sacrificing His only begotten Son on the cross. He has paid a price to redeem us, you and me, and set us free, give us the freedom. And we need to believe that we are no longer in the bondage of sin, of what the Old Testament law says. We are no longer in the bondage of sin. So we also turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. It says, but to him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So what does it say? God in his greater wisdom. Now Christ has become the wisdom from God who has redeemed us. So now Christ has become our righteousness, sanctification and redemption righteousness sanctification and redemption we are just not been made right standing with god 
we are just not been justified with god but then we have been paid a price jesus has paid a price by his own precious blood and he has redeemed us let's turn to romans chapter 5 verse 8 to 11 So God had this plan, how to redeem the mankind at the foundation of the world itself when the man fell. So here we see in Romans chapter 5, verse 8 to 11. Can I request one of you all to please? But God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners. One second, Christ Sean. Uh, I don't think the online class can hear from that. You can use this mic if you can come in the front. But God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. By his sacrificial death, we are now put right with God. How much more then will we, will we be saved by him from God's anger? We were God's enemies, but he made us his friends through the death of his son. Now that we are God's friends, how much more will we be saved by Christ's life? Thank you, Sean. <clears throat> so we read that God demonstrated his own love. God, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, our state didn't change, isn't it? We, when, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we now have been justified by his blood, so how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? That's why we have this new identity when we receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior. So here it says, but of him, in 1 Corinthians 1.30, but of him you are in Christ Jesus. So when we are in Christ Jesus, we have the redemption. We have been redeemed where Jesus paid a full price through his blood. So let's see what this word redemption means in the Greek word. In the Greek word, redemption or a word redeem or which means bought means in the greek word it means agar dizo agar dizo for bought where you go to a market to buy something to redeem something so this word agar dizo in greek describes a marketplace very specifically, if we have to say, it talks about a slave market. There's another word in Greek for the same redemption or redeem. It says exagar dizo, means to purchase a slave out of a slave market. There's an action that is taking place here. To purchase exagar dizo means purchase a slave out of a slave market so imagine each of us from the time adam sinned all of us have sinned all of us have sinned and we all needed a savior to redeem us we all needed a savior to redeem us and here it says there is an action word ex agardizo that means an action that has been taken place a price that has been paid to redeem the person from the slave market so jesus the price that he paid his own precious blood on the cross as a sacrifice to redeem each of us from the slave market 
or from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of slavery, from the bondage of the enemy, we have been redeemed. So what happens? Jesus redeemed us. Somebody had to pay a price to redeem you and me. So ransom or redeem, there's another word in Greek which means lutro. Lutro means to set a captive free by the payment of a ransom. There's a payment made, there's a price that has been paid to set a slave free. So this is what Jesus did on the cross for each of us so that we are redeemed. So we see this term redemption or being redeemed, not something very new just in the New Testament, but we have also seen this word redemption used in both Old and New Testament of the Bible. So in the Old Testament, we see the redemption involves deliverance from the bondage based on the payment of a price by a redeemer. So it has been used even in the Old Testament. And there's a an Hebrew root word. When we talk about the Old Testament, we see most of the script in Hebrew. So what is the Hebrew root word for redemption? Or most often used in the concept of redemption, there's a word called pada. It's not there in your notes, y'all can make a note of it. A Hebrew word within concept, okay, which is in line with the word redemption is called pada, P-A-A, -A, sorry, P-A-D-A, pada or gal, G-A-A-L and kapar, K-A-P-A-R, which means redemption. And the verb pada is a legal term concerning the substitution required for the person or the animal to be delivered. So we need a substitution according to the Old Testament. So in the New Testament, we see Jesus becoming that substitute for you and me. We see Jesus becoming that place of substitute. So the meaning of the uh, word kapar is to cover. Means cover. So what is happening? A fundamental message of the New Testament in the announcement that Jesus of Nazareth is the fulfillment of Israel's messia messianic hope that in him the long-awaited redemption was fulfilled or was arrived. So we see there's a deliverance that the mankind waited in the Old Testament or they longed for. We need a Messiah who can deliver the Israelites from the sin nature. So from the very beginning, the Israelites waited and prayed and longed for that man who can come and deliver, for the Messiah who can come and deliver them. So in the New Testament, in the New Testament, we see the deliverance of mankind from his uh, state of uh, sinful nature, God planned or God had accomplished for deliverance is only through Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. Yeah. So in the New Testament, we see the word redemption means it requires a payment of price. There is a price that needs to be paid to redeem somebody from the slave market. So we see, um, uh, we, uh, we just described how helpless a slave could be in the slave market. He's been held captive. And he is desperately looking for a right owner who can purchase him and release him for free. But then that's very rare occasion it has happened. Very rare. We only get to read that in the book of Hosea where Hosea um, you know, purchases his wife who was in the slave market again and again. 
but then again god allowed that to happen to display how israel gets into sin and how each time he tries to free them but our god is a god who will never give up on each of us so here we see that jesus redeeming each of us from the sinful nature so do you think redemption was necessary do you think redemption was necessary yes why do you think it is necessary it it gives us a chance to become uh, better than what we were before gives you a chance to recover to no to become better than to what to become you were. better what you were for before yes redemption is necessary so that we can be free from captivity free from bondage bondage of sin so we have been redeemed so how are we redeemed we are redeemed by his blood this is what the scripture says ephesians chapter 1 7 says in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace we also see in colossians 1 12 to 14 giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love so what do we see here we see that the concept of redemption is the word ransom that means to redeem where jesus paid the price to release us from the sin and its punishment we see in first timothy chapter 2 verse 6 First Timothy chapter two verse six that his death was an exchange for our life. That his death was an exchange for our life. In fact, the scripture is also quite clear that redemption is only possible through the blood of Jesus Christ, and by His death we have been redeemed. so only possible by jesus christ hebrew 9 12 hebrew chapter 9 verse 12 we are on the notes we're on page 70 it says not with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption means what it's not a cover that's what the hebrew word translated redemption as cover that means every year they have to go and sacrifice an animal okay in in substitute of the human sin but that is not the case in new testament that's not the case in the new testament the greek word of redemption is set free a price has been paid where a person a slave has been set free free from the bondage of slavery free from the bondage of sin he's been redeemed he's been paid price for the eternal freedom it's not a cover it's not that time and again you will get back into slavery no it is the eternal freedom and here we see this scripture clearly says that you have been bought but not the price of an animal a sacrifice of a animal goat or a calf but then by the precious blood of jesus christ himself and this price is for eternal redemption it's that means the work that jesus did on the cross 
is once and for all it is for eternal you don't have to die again and again or you and i don't have to work for our redemption again and again jesus paid price on the cross through his blood once and for all now let's turn to hebrew chapter 12 verse 22 to 24 It reads, But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly, heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Can you believe the blood can speak? Did the blood speak? In the Old Testament, whose blood that spoke or cried out for justification? Abel's blood cried out to God asking for justification. Asking for judgment. And what is the new Adam doing when Jesus died on the cross? What does his blood say? Unsent for all, it paid the price. So, in the spiritual realm, the blood speaks. The blood of Abel cried out for something to be done, a justification to be done for the, uh, you know, unjust that his brother did with him. But the blood of Jesus announces that the work has been completed. So what did Jesus say on the cross, the last word? It is finished. And he commended his spirit into the hand of God. He said, it is finished. It is accomplished. The purpose that you have sent me. The purpose that Father sent Jesus into this world has been completed it's been finished so the blood of abel cried out for justice but then the blood of jesus proclaims that god's justice has been fulfilled i mean fulfilled fully satisfied and redemption has been provided it's completed that's what jesus said it is finished. He accomplished. He gave out even that last drop of blood as a prize for the mankind. He purchased us in full. So what happened by the purchase? When Jesus paid a price, we have been delivered from the Satan's dominion. What does the scripture say? The wages of sin is death. But Jesus paid a price to redeem us from that wage of sin and death. So let's turn to Col Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. Only through the blood of Jesus we have been redeemed and our sins have been forgiven. Forgiven completely. Why? Because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that He could redeem each of us by paying that full price on the cross. So we have been redeemed and been forgiven from our sin. So what happened when we have been redeemed from the state, from the dominion of Satan's, from the dominion, uh, sorry, we have been delivered or redeemed from Satan's dominion. So what have we become now? We have become God's property. You and I now have become God's property because he has paid a price and he has redeemed us he has bought us from that 
slavery from the uh, satan's dominion he has freed us he has freed us from that captivity so what happened let's turn to 1 corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 for you were bought at a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are gods so what does it say it says there's a price that has been paid and it is fully paid it is fully paid so therefore there's a condition what we need to do we need to glorify god how in our body and in our spirit which are gods now imagine if a master goes to a slave market he pays a price and he redeems a captive okay he frees him from there he is bringing him into his house now this person should he serve this master shouldn't he serve because he's been set free now he's been provided with a good clothing to cover his body, good food to eat. He's been taken care. There's food, shelter provided. His, his needs are met. Now he belongs to this master. So he needs to glorify the master. He needs to serve the master. So in a similar way, what is now? God has purchased us. Jesus paid a price and he has purchased. So we need to glorify God with our body and in our spirit because both belongs to him. Both belongs to him. So in Revelations 5, chapter 5, verse 9 and 10 says, is a new song that they sang saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. So this freedom is not something that you've been freed, uh, I mean, uh, taken away from the slavery and here you become another slave. No, you've been freed where you, there is a restoration. You've been restored back to the fellowship to be one with God where you can sing and praise to God. There's a new song that you sing and praise to God because you've been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. And it says, every tongue, tribe, people, and nation have been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. It is not just one set of people, but the whole world. And it says, you have been made kings and priests to our God. There's a new identity. There's a new relationship that you have been restored. There's a new position. There's an authority that comes in this relationship. And you have been restored, you have been redeemed to reign on the earth. Reign as kings and priests, which brings honor and glory to God. Believing that you have been redeemed so you can walk in the free nature that God has given you and me. How do you get this nature of freedom? Because in the Old Testament, it says, when you sin, you have been cursed according to the law. But in New Testament, when Jesus died, he has paid a price and you have been set free from that law that puts you into bondage. So what happened now? When Jesus died on the cross and paid a price of his own blood, we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. This is what we read in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Chapter 3, verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How? Having become a curse for us, for it is written, 
curse is everyone who hangs on a tree cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree so according to the old testament law we have been cursed because we have sinned and deserve eternal death but then jesus God had a plan to redeem us from that eternal death. So he sent his only son, Jesus, who died on the cross. He paid a price through his own blood and he has purchased us. He has redeemed us, redeemed us from the curse of the law. How? By dying on the cross. So when Jesus died on the cross, it was a wood, right? Was a wood. So in the olden days, the people who committed sin, a high rate of crime, were drawn out of the city gate. Okay, each and every city had a wall those days. Okay, they built a city wall. So the crime, a person who commits a higher crime will be uh, chased out or dragged out are out of the city wall and they will hang him on the cross they will hang him on a tree not a cross hang him on a tree a wood okay when they say it can be a tree a log can be anything okay they will hang him on that and they will say cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree so jesus took our place he became curse for you and me. And what happened? In the similar way, according to their law, according to their custom that was in those days, Jesus was drawn out of the city. He was taken up on the mountain. Okay, instead of the tree is nothing but the wood they used to crucify Jesus on the cross, and he was hanged on the cross. And the high priest and other people said, Cursed is this person who die on the cross, who die on the tree. And he became cursed for us. He took away the sin, the whole world upon him. He took the sin of the whole world upon him. And that's when he cried out on the cross. What did he cry? When the sin came upon Jesus, what did Jesus cry out? What happened when the sin came upon Jesus? Okay. He experienced first time a separation from God and Him. For the first time. He was always connected. You know, many times during his walk, he says, I do what I see my father do. I do what I hear my father say. I say what I hear my father say. You know, there was a constant relationship between Jesus and Father. But then now what happened? When the whole sin of the world was put on Jesus, there was a separation between God, God and Him. First time. And that's when Jesus could not bear it and he cried out. With a loud voice, what did Jesus cry out? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's so unbearable. You see, that cry should be in and through us. Our relationship with God, our relationship with Jesus should be like this. In Beatitudes, we see that blessed is the one who yearn or thirst for the spirit or poor in spirit will be quenched. We need to have this thirst to have a relationship with God, more connected with Him. The desire, the passion should increase within us to know more, to be with Him more, to have a good fellowship with Jesus. We need to have that kind of relationship so that the minute you're not connected with him, you know it. And you ask God, God, I yearn for more of you. Come, I need your presence. I want to experience. It should become tangible within me. You see, the way you lead your life or the walk of your life will be so much different when you have a relationship with God. 
because you will become more God conscious in your walk. You'll try to do the things that pleases God. And you'll resist the voice of the enemy. So in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5, we see that, you know, but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth a son, born of a woman, under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. So what happened? We have been redeemed from the curse of the law, and now we have been restored with the relationship that we have as sons and daughters in Christ. A relationship has been restored. And we are just not redeemed from the curse of the law, but we are also redeemed from every lawless deeds. So this is what we read in the book in the letter to Titus, chapter 2, verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people who are zealous for good works. So what happens? God has redeemed us from every lawless deeds. So we need to know this. No more the old nature has power over us. Because the scripture says, that God has redeemed us from every lawless deeds. So these lawless deeds or the old nature of man has no power when we identify ourselves in Christ. So when we say no power, what does it mean? You will not have any kind of temptation or you will not have any kind of desire to do those things. No, you will have. But then you have the power to resist them. You have the power to overcome them. How? By the word, by the confession of the scripture, by renewing your mind, by speaking to the temptation, by speaking to the desire that you have no power, but I have been set free. And then try to purify, our, purify ourselves because we are his own special people. That means we have been sanctified and we have been set apart. Why? Because we are a special people. We are the called ones. We are zealous for the good work. That means we need to desire for more of God, for the things that pleases God, for the good works that pleases God. And you may think, okay, the things, the temptation that was then is different from what we have now. Because as the technology is growing, the uh, many more gadgets are coming, and it is very challenging for us to handle the things right now. But then the scripture says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, it says, Grace to you and peace from the God and God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. So despite the generation that we live in, this, despite no matter how the technology can grow, how modernized our living or our circumstance or atmosphere could be, but here the scripture says, that when we see God, God will deliver us from this present evil age. That means God has given power to every generation who seek Him for help so that we can overcome the temptation, the desire that is there in, in that time. So God is beyond time and age, isn't it? He gives us the strength. He is omniscient. He is an almighty God. He is El Shaddai. He knows the end from the beginning. 
so he knows he knows us what we you and i would go through is a god of understanding he can understand us and that's how he says that that god will deliver us from the present evil age there's more to go maybe we can cover the rest of the points in the next class from 67 onwards so we completed till page 71 we will end this class today and we will continue in the next class um yes so next class i have a a, um, a conference where i need to go so i won't be there so request you all to just go through the chapter that has been covered today please go through read uh, have a clear understanding let this truth get submerged into us so we will have a study time and um, you know you can write your understanding on this chapter on this chapter of redemption okay so that you know we 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 get this truth into us we get the revelation of redemption of jesus christ by paying a price by by uh, pouring out his own blood to redeem us okay okay class we'll end this uh, session with a word of prayer dear god we thank you for the price that you paid on the cross you redeemed us from the slavery from the captivity from the uh, bondage of satan our father and you have set us free you have given us the new identity you have restored the relationship of uh, relationship between us and god thank you jesus thank you lord only through the work that you did on the cross that we could our relationship is restored through which we can call abba father thank you lord thank you father that uh, that we have this new authority that we can walk in the sonship glory of Christ lord thank you lord father i pray and i lift up each and every student in our class i pray that the spirit of the lord will move among each one and give us the revelation give us the understanding of the redemption of each one of us through jesus christ lord so that we get and understand our identity our uh, our redemption power in christ and we have been set free from the curse of the law from uh, we have been set free from every sin and every bondage we have been set set free from every captivity your father thank you lord jesus for the freedom that each of us have in christ lord thank you father thank you for redeeming us by paying a price thank you lord in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you for joining in today's session god bless thank you